mean to order, if you'd please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, present this evening are myself, Mayor Morrow, Council Members Burgoyne, Gearbaugh, Saibo Koenig, Rhodes, Roth, and Tahar. From city staff, we have City Manager Campbell, Clerk Royals, City Superintendent Engineer Rubel, Parks and Rec Director Scruggs, Police Chief Rennick, DPW Director Fordyce, and I believe our Technology Director, Mr. Schonk, is also present this evening. Um, for those of you who are in the audience, if you'd please sign in in the back, we would appreciate that. Um, I do want to note real quick before I entertain a motion to approve the agenda, um, it will come up under reports and other announcements, but both Mr. Burgoyne and myself would like to talk about Saline Area Social Services. Um, so if there's no other changes to the agenda this evening, I would seek a motion to approve the agenda as submitted. I would like to uh, make a motion to approve the agenda, but dropping old business and doing that in another venue like the Chamber of Commerce or where it is more appropriate. Okay, so Mr. Burgoyne would make a motion to approve the agenda removing item 14-142. Is there a second? There's no second, so that dies. Is there a motion to approve the agenda as submitted? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Gearbaugh. Is there a second? Second. Second. Seconded by Ms. Saibo Koenig. Get you next time, Mr. Roth. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. I say haven't. The motion carries unanimously, I guess. Um, there are no absences, so we'll dispense with that. We have two presentations this evening, the first of which is from our very talented and very visible Main Street director, Bob Rosenberger, on behalf of Saline Main Street. Thank you for being here this evening, Bob. Well, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to talk with you about one of my favorite topics, Saline Main Street. Let's look at the four teams. Uh, you should have a package. Did you all get a package? Yes. Cool. Please. Thank you, Terry. Uh, Terry, appreciate it. <laughs> she looks at me, of course you have a package. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we'll start with design. Uh, the design team is, has been busy. Uh, bee bloom and flowers are in place. Uh, you may have noticed that some of the flowers didn't fare very well a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but thanks to Nature's Garden, who is the, the company that's responsible for procuring and, and helping us keep the flowers growing, they found out what the problem was. Um, actually, um, the flowers drown because there were, uh, yeah, it's true. There, there were no holes in the bottom of some of the pots. And so um, anyway, they've, uh, Nature's Garden has replaced at their cost um, some of the flowers. So that's, uh, that's exciting. And, and I think it still looks beautiful downtown, uh, despite the sort of flower calamity that we had. Um, <clears throat> we also placed, thanks to Cindy Jupko, um, flowers at the entrance to Leather Bucket Alley. Um, the team has been busy working on an architectural scavenger hunt, uh, thanks to Councilman Jim Roth for his help in putting that together. Um, the scavenger hunt is, is an opportunity for, there's one for kids and one for adults to go downtown, look around, see if you can find the pictures of uh, the different architectural pieces downtown. It's, uh, it's going to be fun and I think, it's, uh, I think people will enjoy it. They, uh, they, we kicked that off at last week's uh, Thursday night concert, Summer Music Series concert. The uh, historic horse trough has been brought downtown in conjunction with the uh, uh, Saline Historic Society. Um, it's, uh, it, it's sitting in, I can never even keep the parking lot numbers correct, but it's the one by Benito, it's four, four. thank you. Four. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's by, count, by, uh, by parking lot four, um, and, and it's, it's really kind of neat because it brings our history alive uh, right downtown. And um, I just learned this kind of recently, uh, if you get a chance to look at it, look for the, the dog watering bowls. They're there. It's cool. Um, student banners. Uh, you may remember the student banners that were downtown. Uh, we did that in conjunction with the Slenary School System, uh, working with the art teachers. We had over 180 works of art that were produced by students from uh, grades kindergarten through high school. And um, uh, we uh, petitioned a group of um, uh, local artists to judge those. We were only able to choose 80. We wish we could have chosen them all, but we were only able to choose 80 because we only have 40 poles, and uh, light poles, that is. And so um, we, uh, we, we made the winning 
artwork into banners, hung them downtown, had a lot of people come downtown just to see the banners, to give credit to all the other students who worked so hard but weren't necessarily chosen. Um, the, uh, and thanks to Leslie Needhammer for allowing us to do this, we put all the, all the original artwork on display at the district library. And, um, and ribbons were given to all of the, um, the participating students, whether they, their artwork was hung or not um, as a banner. And ongoing projects, we have two that we're working on with the city, um, Merchant Park, we're working on the refurbishing of Merchant Park, and also the streetscape on Michigan Avenue. Moving on to the BES, or Business and Economic Success Team, uh, we did bring one business in the last quarter into downtown, Gen Motion LLC, um, took uh, 101 South Ann Arbor Street and Suite 103, that's above my favorite cafe. Um, there, it's a mer marketing firm and it uh, has two um, permanent positions or full-time positions. We did, at the same time, lose one of our icons and of course everybody knows that Drowsy Parrot closed. Uh, shame, but there it is. Um, we welcomed a new team member to the Business and Economic Success Team, Karen Ragland joined the team, which is great. All of you who know Karen know that she brings a lot to the table and has already asked a lot of great questions and, and done a lot of great work. Um, we do have uh, a spark uh, coming to, to Celine in August, on August 14th, to present their uh, start a new business, starting a new business program. Uh, they do that every month in Ypsilanti. This, uh, the 14th is a Thursday and they're bringing it to Celine. It will be held at the uh, Celine Main Street office. and. Um, uh, it is open to the public. There is a small fee, but it's, it's certainly great training if you're in, at all interested in starting your own business. Um, we did, uh, working with the Chamber and the City, uh, create folders with pertinent information for uh, downtown or, or anywhere, prospective business owners. Um, so it's a prospective business owner folder. Um, looks kind of like that. There's a little picture on your, in your yeah. folder. Um, and then the market study that was petitioned last year and, uh, and conducted through Celine Main Street or through Michigan Main Street, I should say, um, we are, the team is currently putting together um, um, presentations to make individually to the downtown businesses. There's a lot of information in that study and, and we need to boil it down so that it's really the information that's most pertinent to the business owners. So we'll be doing that. Moving over to the promotion team. Uh, during the quarter we had two um, two um, events complete, uh, Ladies' Night Out, which is held twice a year in the spring and in the fall. Uh, we did the spring one this year in um, uh, April, and we found out that, um, that the later spring doesn't work as well. You know, we had a pretty wicked winter, and so we pushed it off to later spring, but moms are real busy in the springtime. They're, they're golf league starting and baseball <coughs> starting, and who knows, so many things going on. So, um, so we, uh, we have surmised that probably we're better to push it back to February where it has always been before. Um, we also worked with uh, the Celine Area Social Services and, uh, and asked ladies to bring a, a ladies item to, per, to uh, contribute to Celine Area Social Services and they did that. We delivered more than a dozen shopping bags and that was pretty cool. Uh, the other event that finished was Music Under the Arch which runs January through May um, once a month, uh, music at Stone Arch. Uh, that was a successful year this year. Um, there was a, if you look at the numbers on top, there was a shortfall, but, but fortunately there's a reserve amount of cash and we were able to uh, break even using that reserve cash. Uh, and the summer music series is underway. Uh, every Thursday during the summer, free concert on South Ann Arbor Street. And then moving over to the organization team, uh, a couple of quick highlights. Um, we had 1,160 volunteer hours in April, May, and June. Uh, at Using the, the, the standard rate of $22 an hour, that's $25,250 worth of free labor that, uh, that was provided to the city. So kind of exciting. We had great volunteers in Saline Main Street, really great volunteers. Uh, fundraising, we raised over $26,000. Uh, the National Main Street uh, um, Conference was held in Detroit this year, so because it was so close, we were able to take four board members and myself, and we, uh, it, was, it was a fabulous concert, uh, concert, conference, and, um, um, and uh, we should be proud of, of Detroit and Michigan Main Street and all the communities that helped present this conference. It was exceptional. Um, we did have some visitors from Wyoming. 
Wyoming Main Street, uh, the state of Wyoming, Wyoming Main Street does this thing where wherever the main, wherever the national Main Street conference is going to be held, they uh, they 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 go there to that state and they visit a few communities to see what's happening in those communities, Main Street communities. And we were honored that they chose Celine. Um, they had um, uh, almost 70 people come into town, and and they really enjoyed the time. We also had uh, the Michigan Historical Preservation Network had their conference at about the same time. Their conference was in Jackson, Miss, uh, Michigan, and um, they um, they came through Celine to see what our, our town looked like. It was part of a tour of Route 12, and uh, we, we were able to uh, show them our downtown. We didn't have as much time as we wanted because they, we were the last stop on their tour, but thanks to uh, Councilwoman Terry Saibo Koenig and uh, to Bob Blaine from the Historical Society who took people around downtown and showed them our beautiful city. Um, we have a new volunteer coordinator at Main Street. Uh, her name is Karen Dapkis. She's doing a great job. Uh, volunteers are the, are the lifeblood of our, of our organization and so um, Karen's job is a very important job. We currently have 227 volunteers in our database which is pretty darn exciting. Um, fundraising, uh, we have applied for and we're qualified to uh, hold raffles to help raise funds. Uh, we currently have an application for raffles in uh, with the state for the remaining Lean Main Street, I mean, a summer music series concert and also for Oktoberfest. Uh, haven't heard yet on that. Uh, and the downtown business and property owners, we meet with them once a month. Um, and, uh, and, and we invite the city and the chamber and, of course, Main Street to talk about any issues that, that are pertinent for us and then open the floor for the, uh, the business owners as well. Um, and also, uh, the, as part of that, or what came out of that, was uh, the business owners decided they wanted to have a, a casual, informal get-together. So they had their first one at Breck and Grill, just an opportunity to get together and talk about things uh, that are of interest to them. So in a nutshell, hopefully kind of quickly, that was the last quarter for Celine Main Street. Very good. Thank you, Bob. Are there any questions for Bob regarding his, his report? Very thorough. Awesome. Thank you. Well, thank you. you very much. Appreciate your time this evening. Thank you. Uh, up next, we have our DPW director, Mr. Fordyce, our police chief, Larry Rennick, and city manager, Todd Campbell, to uh, talk a little bit about downtown parking, and this is a follow-up from uh, a conversation we had at a previous meeting. Um, I believe it came under the discussion portion of our agenda. So this will be a little bit more information for council members to think about, and um, maybe we can find a way to, to move forward in the, in the near future. Mr. Campbell, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yes, uh, this is um, a couple months ago, a discussion at City Council and had questions about parking and directions to parking. and. Um, we were talking about, uh, again, the question came up again about whether or not to enforce the parking restrictions in the municipal lots downtown. Um, so uh, my staff's understanding was um, uh, council had some questions, so uh, Jeff and Chief and I went out and did what I would call a little walkabout in our downtown um, to, to check on signage, to check on um, if there's any inconsistencies, to check to see if there's any uh, additional available parking that's not being utilized right now and those types of things so um, we did that we walked through the entire downtown took some pictures and some video and and um, the video links gonna work no okay well forget the video <laughs> links then just we'll talk about the stills um, but in any case um, uh, we wanted to bring this back and and uh, show you so council just uh, uh, what the current status is any deficiencies or not um, and some other ideas, uh, whether it be, you know, there's been, you know, discussions over the years about the decorative signage uh, for the parking, uh, downtown parking lots and, and, and upkeep and the challenges of those and those types of things. So um, unless there's any questions or comments from me, I will turn it over to Jeff. Very good. Okay, thank you. Um, so just a quick uh, PowerPoint presentation. Uh, of the downtown uh, parking lots and the existing signage, um, what we found on our on our walkabout. Um, we start here on uh, westbound Michigan Avenue. We're just a little bit west of Harris Street, east of Hall, uh, with a, a parking lot sign. This one directing, uh, suggesting to turn on Hall Street to get to parking lot one. Um, then at the the northwest corner of Michigan Avenue and, and Ann Arbor Street, we have on both sides of of the uh, light pole. The parking sign pointing in both directions, effectively pointing to all of our parking lots. 
uh, from both sides of that, that pole. Um, on the diagonally opposite corner, southeast corner, similar signage there on, on both sides of the pole. Uh, this is in the westbound Michigan, sorry, that's actually eastbound. Um, it's the eastbound lane, and then on that light pole, it's hard to see in this photograph, but there's actually on both sides of that pole uh, a sign pointing south into parking lot four. And on southbound North Ann Arbor Street, um, just as you're coming into the 100 block, uh, two parking signs uh, directing down McKay Street to parking lot five. Uh, the opposite side of those same poles, uh, one sign pointing west to parking lot five. Oh, I want to go back. Um, this one, if you look a little further down the left side, you'll see uh, a sign on the light pole there pointing into parking lot one. Um, now on South Ann Arbor Street, uh, we're looking north here, just outside the stone arch. Uh, again, both sides of those poles have the double arrows pointing towards uh, parking lot two, three, and four. Uh, further down Henry Street, uh, this is another double-sided sign pointing into the Henry Street entrance of parking lot four. And then on uh, East Henry, another double-sided sign. This is right at the entrance to parking lot three. Um, and this kind of summarizes where all those, those arrow signs are. Um, most, most of them are double-sided, not all of them, but uh, the majority of them are. Um, so they are you know, concentrated right in the, in the core downtown area where, where the parking is located. Um, we'll make a note of it later on in um, some deficiencies on the deficiency slide, but parking lot two does not have uh, one of those standardized signs pointing into it. But it does have one of these signs. Actually, it has two of these signs. Uh, so these are the, the current parking lot restrictions. Uh, and this is on lots one, two, and four. Um, lots three and five do not have uh, any parking restrictions. So generic three-hour limit between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. Monday through Saturday, unless otherwise posted. So within each of these lots, there are additional uh, postings and parking restrictions. The street parking in the downtown area, uh, no parking 3 a.m. to 6 a.m., and then uh, two-hour parking from 8 to 6, Monday through Saturday. So some of the deficiencies, uh, the one I mentioned already, that there's no uh, standardized parking sign pointing into parking lot two. Um, East Henry Street, well, we were walking along on the, the north lane. Um, there are a number of parking signs there, and collectively they're quite confusing. Um, in fact, I, I can't recall ever seeing anybody park there, even though it actually is permitted between certain signs. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's uh, one deficiency. And then the, the otherwise posted regulations within those uh, three lots, um, the purpose of some of them, such as that, that two-hour parking on one particular spot within parking lot one, mm -hmm. not sure what the, the purpose of that is. Um, and then the, the all-day parking that's within uh, parking lot four. There are additional um, restrictions. Parking lot two has some that are kind of based on how that property was brought together and certain businesses have um, rights to spots during some hours of the day and not others. So those, those would have to stay, but there might be a, uh, an opportunity to remove some of these or, or clarify some of them. And speaking of opportunities, um, on the south side of, of East McKay, uh, we felt that we might be able to create some more on-street parking there. Maybe not all day parking, but um, probably with an opportunity for some evening parking on that side of the street. Um, initially, maybe one or two all-day spots. Um, and again, that, that north side of East Henry Street, where uh, collectively the signs are a little bit confusing. And then we also talked about signage um, within the parking lots, so that if you're in one lot, 
and it's full, um, assign something, you know, a simple map like this that uh, would show you where the other lots are. Um, and, I, you know, I think this would need a little bit of editing to, to work in that role, but uh, something along those lines. So, you know, and, and then, you know, maybe a sticker that says, you know, you're in this lot right now. And, um, and then people will find their way to the other ones, uh, particularly, you know, number five, which is underutilized, and, um, and uh, three is a little bit underutilized also. Um, and on this, the, the new signage, uh, there was a thought to perhaps remove the decorative signs and uh, replace them with more of a standardized street sign that might be a little bit easier to read and a little bit more clear as to what, uh, you know, more concisely and clearly present the information, assuming um, that we have parking restrictions within, within those lots. So that's that. It, that's, that's it, Mr. That's Fordyce. It, Mr. Slide. Campbell, Chief Rennick, do you want to add anything? No? Well, let me just say I, I appreciate you, you gentlemen doing an analysis on this and taking some time to investigate it. Um, I guess before we, we open it up here for questions and comments and opinions, um, I, for one, am, am very much in favor of um, increased signage if that's deemed appropriate and maybe cleaning up and making more... Um, well, making the signs that, that are posted a little bit more clear. Um, two of the deficiencies which you touched on this evening, Jeff, I think that I mentioned when we um, last discussed this issue is I think especially on evenings, Friday night, excuse me, and Saturday night, um, that lot uh, adjacent to Ann Arbor Street and Hall Street tends to be full with tenants who live in the apartments above the businesses and those who are patronizing most likely either Dan's or the downtown diner and making sure that people know that there's additional parking on McKay Street which is consistently underutilized I think is important. Also problematic although not nearly as often is the parking behind Max which I think you also addressed which um, when there are weddings at Stone Arch or maybe um, one of the concerts at Stone Arch in the winter or a big event at Max um, sometimes that lot fills up, but oftentimes people don't know about the parking just across the street adjacent to the water tower. Um, so I, I think those are two things to, to look at. Um, and of course, we'll probably continue to have a discussion on enforcement and whether we want to continue to post hours if, if we're not actually penalizing people for, for violating the rule. So does other council members have questions or comments? Mr. Burgoyne? Um, well, first, um, I agree with your comments on where the lots are full and, and when there's an issue. Um, I think you said it just right. Um, in, on, I did have a question on the map that you had with the P's on it. Um, and you said that uh, perhaps you might post that at the exit area of a parking lot so that people with, with, with a a little star showing you are here, you know, so that people can see other places. But my um, request would be, is there any way, if you're going to post that at the exit, to also indicate where they can park on streets? Not only the, the city parking lots, but also other available parking, because there's a lot of street parking that people don't really use well. So I'm, I'm just wondering if you, in your thought process, if you could somehow include that. Yeah, uh, just, I'm not sure graphically how we would show that, but uh, we could take a look at that and see if there's a way to. Well, a Google map of Earth with, you know, blank out where the parking lots are and so forth, perhaps, or, I, I don't know, just think up ideas. That's, that's a good idea. Um, a, 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 another comment I have is that all of these light green parking uh, signs are very hard to see when somebody's just driving and distracted with their, you know, soccer mom with kids or whatever. It's not that easy to see those types of signs. But I do notice that people right away notice the international signs. And I don't know if our zoning code prohibits us using those blue signs. But I would much rather have somebody who's just driving to be able to immediately know there's a lot of parking. Just, just absorb it. The way you do in Europe, you know, you're driving around, you see a P, you know where the parking is. That's my thought. 
I, I do believe we're bound by the uh, manual of uniform traffic control devices, and and that's that sign. Can we verify that, Mr. Fordyce? Sure. Okay. And we can't have a blue P on our own property or whatever. Yeah, I'd like I'd like confirmation on Mr. Burgoyne's point because I I tend to agree. I'm not an expert on these things, but from all the political campaigns I've worked on, it was always a hard and fast rule not to use white signs, that they're just not as visible, not as prominent, and to use color, especially a, a bold, dramatic color, usually makes more of an impact. Okay, Mr. Hart? Um, yes, thank you. Um, I would like to put in a word for um, simplifying the sign system. Um, I'm not a signage expert, but I believe there's I've read that there's research that indicates the more signs you have and the more complex they are, the less information people actually glean from them. Um, so if we're looking at revamping how we indicate parking around the city, it, it might be useful even to get some expert help, maybe through Main Street, um, some design help, or, or, or I don't know, maybe Jeff, you have, you have resources for that too, but I just want to put in a plug for keeping it as simple as possible. Good. Mr. Rhodes? Um, Mr. Fordyce, could you go back to the map that has the parking lots on it? And just a comment there. Well, that one will work, okay. just as well as the other one. Um, and I know this is not the final thing, but um, the way the parking lots are laid out, it, it, coming up the street, it looks like that's where you enter, and that's true of all of them except this one? Yeah, because exactly. Some, somebody might be looking for right, that, to get in there. Yeah, that's definitely one of the edits that I was thinking about prior to uh, publishing that sign. Okay, thank you. Any other comments, questions, Mr. Gearbaugh? Just a question. On the height of those ones that are on North Ann Arbor Street, are those signs at a height that is recommended, or I just didn't know if people are missing those because of the height and the trees or something. But that's 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 pretty much a normal sign height. Um, the 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 current standards for sign heights are, uh, I think, what most people would consider high. Um, they, uh, you know, they're they're intended in these areas to clear um, pedestrian heads and. Um, so that, that places them up a little bit higher than, uh, than you'd see on a rural road. Yeah, I was just wondering, because even that example right there, you can see the tree branches starting to block that mm -hmm. sign. Yeah. No, I noticed the one always, when I come up uh, Michigan Avenue in, heading west, I always see the one that's pointing to the hall lot. So that one always mm -hmm. seems very visible, very clear. Well, we could certainly take a look at the tree clearance on all these. I, I, that one for sure, I don't think the others really have that issue. Um, no, I was just from the point of height, it just seems like as you're coming up, if you're looking more in the ground instead of looking up, you might not catch those signs. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Mr. Rubin? Um In terms of permitted parking, um, since the parking fines we've been told are not high, they're in the area of $15 or something like this, um, I would rather enforce than not enforce if we have the signs. But in terms of, of signage, my, my thought is that I would like it long enough so that nine out of ten people would not be bothered and they could stay as long as they wanted to stay in the downtown. So I'd rather see four hour parking with tires chalked and then at the six hour level or so, once a day at certain, maybe at different times, but once a day enforced. And then every parking lot that has constraints, if they're posted for overnight, always be swept through overnight by the police. Um, I would rather have some enforcement if we have regulations. I, I don't like regulation without enforcement. Right. But that's, and that's a similar point that I think I raised when this, this issue was last brought up, and I believe Mr. Gearbaugh did um, as well. Um, well. Let me ask this question to everyone on council. Obviously, there have been uh, a, a number of questions and inquiries uh, made to Mr. Fordyce that he'll need to look into and, and, and come back to us, um, hopefully, at, at our next meeting. Is that doable, Jeff, on August the 11th? 
to get some answers to some of these questions? Um, it should be. You get an extra week in there because we don't meet the first Monday in, in August. Yeah, I'm going to be on vacation that extra week. But oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, if, if, well if, if not the 11th, like then we that. meet the following week. Um, let me ask this question, though, to Mr. Burgoyne's point. Um, while we're continuing to investigate, while we continue to investigate improving the, the signage and advertising the additional parking that exists in our downtown, uh, is it still the consensus of council to maintain the current limits on parking but not to enforce? Is there any? Hmm. I just have a question. Yeah, do go we, ahead. Do we enforce the 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. at all? Or are we not enforcing anything? I don't think we're enforcing anything. Yeah. Anything. So 3 a.m., that isn't even, okay. My thing would be forget, if we're not going to enforce it, we take it off, we change the ordinance and change the signage to do that. I don't want to have two different messages being sent out. Mr. Roth? I come with the platform. If we have an ordinance, we enforce it. And I like to kind of keep that. I know of somebody, I heard from one of the property owners downtown, one of the tenants, or someone helping out the tenants, was had their car towed and other problems thrown at them because they left their car parked over a Friday night in parking lot number four. So they could scream unfair treatment if we don't enforce kind of uniformly. Well, I, I mean, I, I agree. If, if, if it's not the consensus of council to, to enforce the current limitation on parking, then I would concur with Mr. Gearbaugh, then let's get rid of the, the limitation because it, it does send conflicting messages. What, what do the rest of my colleagues think? Uh, Mr. Rhodes? Um, if we have a have an ordinance or a rule, we should enforce it. And if we're not enforcing it, we should eliminate it. Okay. Ms. Tahar? Ditto. Okay. I agree. Okay, so uh, just a little bit of help. How many people then, maybe by a show of hands, would like to start enforcing? Okay. It, it, versus just getting rid of the policy. Well, I'd rather modify the policy and then enforce All right. and modify let me let me start here though so it looks like there's consensus to start enforcing the the current policy that's stipulated on the signs is that correct did i see a majority mr roth you're agreeing mr gearball you're agreeing mr hart did you agree to that i'll agree to that mr burgoyne agrees with that on the condition that the policy be changed correct right i'd like to ask the business owners if the policy were changed to four hours and make it just a little bit longer if that would be sufficient uh, for their employees not to park where they shouldn't, if that would be sufficient, give a sufficient amount of time for their customers, even at the outlier, to, to be able to have enough time at four hours. I'd, I'd like to not be mean, but still enforce, you know. So I'd like to figure out what the right number of hours is. Okay. Mr. Rhodes? My concern with enforcing the current regulation that we have is that all we're going to do for the regular people who are downtown all the time is going to go out there and do a car shuffle. And then we're not going to create any more parking than what we have now. And the employees are going to have lost time. And we're also adding to pollution in the environment by doing that. So we either need to lengthen it long enough. Maybe it's the four hours. I, I don't know what the right term is. Either need to lengthen it or get rid of it. Okay. I guess I would be, uh, my preference would be to maintain the current policy, but I do find some merit in Mr. Burgoyne's comments about, at a minimum, engaging some interested parties, property owners, and businesses to see if they think that a four hour time period might be more appropriate. Um, and then maybe revisiting this um, in, well, the next time we meet or the time after that, which is in three, four weeks. Um, Mr. Campbell, did you? Uh, j just a comment, um, it, and that's fine. If, if council wants to, to modify and lengthen the term, if whatever we lengthen it to, that's what we're going to enforce. Mm -hmm. So we're not, I mean, there was a suggestion at the last meeting by a business owner of, well, make it four, but only do it after six or eight or whatever. Can't do that. We can't. I mean, if if you say if 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 the city council says we're going to go to four or six or whatever, that's what we're going to enforce. I just just for clarification. Okay, so. Mr. Rhodes. And is the enforcement going to add a requirement in the police department to bring another person on board? So are, are we going to end up spending more money to enforce? 
Well, I mean, or Chief, we do it with want, existing? I mean, the discussions that Chief and I have had is that we would use current personnel. Okay. All right. Mr. Gearbaugh? Um, I can compromise on the four hours thing. Um, is there potential that we could use some of our other lots and not necessarily make those eight hours so that we encourage the uh, employees to park in those lots? Yeah. So, say again, the eight Change hours. the ones on Henry Street to make them like an eight hour. Those are unrestricted. So they're unrestricted completely. They can park there 24 7. So it's more education than anything. Got it. <laughs> and what, is, is, is there anything posted on the McKay Street lot or is that 24? There's no restrictions. No restrictions. No restrictions. Okay. Okay. Once they get a parking ticket, they'll be educated. Right. <laughs> right. All right, so what's the, the consensus? Do we want to investigate changing it to four hours, or do we want to begin enforcing the current standard while we continue to, to look at increased uh, signage and improved signage in the downtown? Mr. Rhodes. I, I would um, advocate for um, going back to some of the major business property owners downtown and ask them what their what the best hour time period they believe would be for their themselves and their their staff and their customers and then see if there's a consensus on that one and then set our set our limit at that and then enforce okay mr burgoyne you agree with that yes perfect okay and i would agree with that as well mr gearbaugh i just want to say i want to make sure that we have full staffing in the police department before we actually turn this on so that we don't have any coverage issues or concerns can you maybe, we're going to obviously We're going to talk about that anyways, but yeah. that's just another thing. Can you make sure that you confirm that? I don't that want to put any more to strain that. on our department yep. until we have everything. No, that's good. Okay. Mr. Roth? I still say whatever we have, okay. I want enforced. Okay. I don't care about the, whatever the change is, it's amenable to the parking situation. Okay. Ms. Tahar? Yeah. Okay um, to engage businesses? Yes. Okay. Engage businesses and, and then... Enforce. Okay, Mrs. Yeah. Seibel. Okay, so it looks like there's consensus on engaging the businesses um, regarding whether we should keep it at three or change it to four. And actually, they obviously, when we engage businesses, they're free to tell us whatever it is they want to tell us about, about parking. So we may get some additional insights as well. Um, Jeff, you'll come back at either our next meeting on the 11th or the subsequent meeting um, to address some of the questions and concerns that were brought up this evening. Mm -hmm. um, and then what else am I missing? I, I assume two. Um, I just want to make sure we're, we're clear on this. The lots that are currently unrestricted, no one is suggesting changing that. Is that correct? Uh -huh. okay. okay. Good. Feel like you have consensus? And Chief, you'll be able to talk to the, about the staffing issues when this comes up? Okay. Good. Anything else? Okay. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, we've come to citizen comments on agenda items. Uh, under the Open Meetings Act, any citizen may come forward at this time and make comment or question on an item that appears on this agenda. Comments will be limited to three minutes per person. Anyone who would like to speak is requested but not required to state his or her name and address for the record. Are there any citizen comments? The, Mr. Yes. Mr. Morrow. Yes. Um, I'm, I'd like to make a comment. I'm not feeling well. I may not be here okay. uh, later on. Okay. But I, I did have one issue. If, Please. If there are no other citizen comments. You are technically a citizen, sir, so you may you may speak. <laughs> On uh, Saline Area Social Services, first, I, I do agree with your effort to try to uh, resolve the issue and try to promote support um, to help uh, the needy citizens in our area. Um, I do have a suggestion that I'm going to email to you, okay. and I would like to be I have some background in social services, and I would like to be included in the committee that is engaging in attempting to resolve this uh, in any way that you feel like could be supportive. Um, that's okay. basically my, my Actually, I, I was working with, thank you, Mr. Burgoyne, I was working with um, Justine Meyer in the city manager's office today to um, schedule a subsequent meeting. So I will um, make a point to, to connect with her tomorrow and make sure that you're aware when that group is going to meet. 
Okay? And if you have to excuse yourself at any time because you're not feeling well, um, that is certainly fine and uh, hope you feel better soon. Are there any other citizen comments? No, then we move on to the consent agenda. The following consent agenda will normally be adopted without discussion. However, at the request of any citizen or council member, uh, any item may be removed from the consent agenda for council discussion. Mr. Gearbaugh? Mayor, I'd like to remove C14-143. Uh, blah, 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 blah. That's the uh, Monroe Street, Street listing? Property. Correct. Okay. So that will go under, let's see, that will be, that'll be the first thing under new business, Mr. Gearbaugh. Thank you. Okay. If there are no other changes to the consent agenda, I would seek a mo motion to approve the consent agenda as amended. So moved. Second. Thank you, Mr. Rhodes. Seconded by Council Member Gearbaugh. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. We move on to old business item 14-142. This is a resolution supporting proposal one on the August 5th, 2014 ballot. This will be a motion to approve or not to approve the resolution in support of proposal one, urging residents to vote yes on proposal one on the August 5th, 2014 ballot. Is there a motion? Move to approve. Thank you, Mr. Rhodes. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Ms. Seibel Koenig. And if the clerk would please play, take note that Mr. Uh, Burgoyne exited. Okay. Um, do you want to discuss your, your memo since council actually postponed this subject to uh, the attorney's review? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as uh, the mayor just uh, mentioned at the last meeting, there was a concern whether or not um, council was acting legally um, by supporting uh, uh, proposal one with the resolution. And as you see from my memo, uh, after discussions with city attorney uh, Scott Smith, uh, he is in agreement that, that in fact, no, the city council is not breaking any laws um, by supporting um, uh, proposal one via resolution. Now, if they were, if city council were going to approve expenditures such as brochures or videos or posters, uh, yes, that would be a violation of the law. Simply, uh, you all are not proposing to do that. Um, you, and so we pr provided, as you, you'll see, provided um, uh, Mayor Marl's proposed proposal, uh, I'm sorry, resolution, as well as the one that was uh, offered up by MML. Uh, both of them are fine. Um, um, that's that's what uh, Mr. Smith has opined. Uh, there's also, a, as mentioned, I believe, um, the MML website. There are a, a list of many, many, many communities that have done just this, uh, passed a similar resolution um, supporting the pro uh, passage of Proposal 1. Um, and um, uh, there also, there's also a, a clarifying statement that says this is not against the law to do this for city councils to do this. So um, having said that, I'm happy to do my best to answer any questions, take any comments. Okay. Are there any questions for Mr. Campbell? Mr. Rhodes? Since there are um, two resolutions, are we voting on one or the other, or are we going to pass both? Well, the way I would interpret the motion, since um, I submitted the first resolution, um, I would interpret the motion um, that we would be approving that resolution. Um, and as you can see, if you compare it with the original one from MML, it's just wordsmithed a little bit um, to reflect what I think is, is more this council's voice and my voice uh, individually. But the, 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 the purpose and the point of, of each is the same. So if council members would prefer to approve the one um, that was submitted by MML, that's fine with me. Well, my intent when I moved it was to approve yours. Okay. I wanted to make sure that okay. everybody was clear. Okay, very good. Any other questions, comments? Okay. Well, then it's been properly moved to approve the resolution in support of Proposal 1 on the August 5th, 2014 ballot. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it and the motion carries unanimously. We move on to new business, and of course we have an additional item per Mr. Gearbaugh's request. This is item 14-143. This is to acknowledge receipt of the, or the July 14th, 2014, excuse me, memo from City Manager Campbell to approve the 207 Monroe Street Property Listing Agreement Amendment with the Charles Reinhardt Company. Is there a motion to acknowledge receipt? Mr. Roth, you'll move yes. to acknowledge receipt? Okay, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mayor Pro Tem. To harm. Mr. Gearbaugh, did you have a question or concern, sir? Yeah, I won't be supporting this because I didn't think going down to $200,000 is a, I think it's too big of a jump. Um, there's a number of properties that have just gone up and are selling extremely fast in town, so I think um, 
my compromise was to move it to 225 was appropriate. So unfortunately, I don't think that was council's decision. Okay. Appreciate you re-articulating that. You made that clear at the work meeting. So thank you. Mr. Rhodes? I would just say that the, the one single thing that we could do to market this property and move it faster is for the city to request of planning to change the zoning on that parcel to something that allows for some more density uh, than what, it, what the current zoning does. We can, um, I can work with, I don't think, is Mr. Rubel still here? No, he's not still here. I can work, um, is he? Okay. He's out in the lobby. Oh, okay. Well, I can work with staff um, to maybe make sure this is added as a discussion item at our next planning commission meeting per Mr. Rhodes' request. Can't guarantee results, Mr. Right. Rhodes, but we can, we can certainly discuss it. Thank Good you. Good suggestion. Are there any other comments regarding this motion? No, that's been properly moved by Roth, seconded by Tahar to acknowledge receipt. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Nay. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Is that five to one? We move on to new business 14-149. This is bid for rec center cardio weight room equipment. This will be a motion to acknowledge receipt of the July 16th, 2014 memo from Parks and Rec Director Scruggs and to approve or not to approve the contractual agreement with All Pro for a planned replacement program for three years at a cost of $76,510 and to authorize or not authorize the mayor to sign the agreement. Is there a motion? Move to approve and authorize. Thank you, Council Member Rhodes. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by, is that Councilwoman Seibel Koenig? That was. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, Ms. Scruggs, it's all you. Thank you. Um, for the past uh, three, six, six years, um, we have uh, gotten into a, a program of every three years replacing our cardio equipment. And um, the, our lease has, or not lease, but our, our three-year agreement has come to an end, and um, we put out to bid um, for uh, a total of 10 treadmills, four elliptical machines, one stepper, uh, a lateral X machine, which is kind of like an elliptical machine, but it's a side-to-side, -side. and um, a, a machine called the Jacob's Ladder, which is like a, a revolving stair climber, and um, an ab solo machine. Uh, ab solo, it's a, a works on your core. It's you throw a ball into like this pit, and um, it's like a, a heavy ball. So it's a, a different type of piece of equipment for us. So we we sent out bids to um, three of the the top sellers in Michigan, and we received the bids back uh, early in July, and. Um, the uh, results came back where All Pro had the, the, the best bid as far as uh, monetary bid and also um, in bidding the exact equipment they w that we were wanting. Um, the interesting part about All Pro is that, um, for example, when we turn our equipment in now, we're going to get a $16,000 credit because they do a 25% buyback at the end of the lease, or end of the, the purchase, not purchase, the end of the three-year term. And, um, and so their bid looks a little bit higher than the others, but at the end, we're gonna be receiving that money back. So um, essentially, I, I put a, a little spreadsheet together that shows how much um, each of the pieces of equipment were. And also we have a, a three pieces of equipment that we're going to turn back in that we currently own. When we've had these for years and years and they've become um, where it's not efficient for us to keep investing money into repairing them. And they actually gave us the best uh, trade-in value for those pieces of equipment out of the three um, companies. And so essentially we're going to be paying out $76,510 and then at the end of the three-year term, we're going to receive $19,000 back. So their total cost would be $57,382. Um, All Pro is the company that we have uh, have been going with for the past three years. They have excellent uh, repair program. They're out within 24 hours um, repairing our equipment um, if anything goes down. Um, and uh, the, the pieces, the, the matrix, and octane uh, pieces of equipment have proven proven to be very very reliable, heavy duty, um, have very little problems with them, and 
hardly any downtime at all. So um, we took into account a lot of uh, our, our work history with them and the, the um, actual pieces of equipment. So we're asking for your blessing to proceed. Very good, excellent. Thank you for your presentation. Mr. Gearbaugh, do you have a question, sir? Just curious, and most of this equipment is pretty standard gym equipment. I mean, do you get input back from um, our clients that want this type of equipment or not? I'm, I've seen the Jacob's Ladder, which is fine, they use it, but that Ab Solo, it gets kind of, after a while, just nobody uses it. And oh, really? the gym that I was at, yeah, it was yeah, kind of a phase thing. I actually, I didn't talk with our customers about these new two new pieces, but I've talked to other facilities, um, other city-owned facilities, and those pieces have been very popular. Okay. Um, in fact, someone had recommended getting two Jacob's Ladders instead of one, but we were like, let's just try the one to begin with. Yeah, that is popular, I've seen it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Mr. Rose. Um, if I remember correctly, this expenditure is a line item in your budget that was Correct. approved. And uh, second question is the money that's coming back now, the 16978 from the current equipment turn in, where, where do those funds go? That will go back into the account to help subsidize. The same account. Correct. Yeah. And also, if you recall, we received a $8,000 CARES um, grant. Mm -hmm. um, so there, there's some other pieces of equipment that we'll purchase later to help subsidize, um, or not to subsidize, but to use the CARES grant um, to replace some equipment in our free weight room. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? Ms. Scruggs, thank you for your work on thank this. You. Obviously, uh, you and I have spoke uh, at length before, but um, mm -hmm. new state-of-the-art modern equipment really does make a difference, and it's it's often can uh, be the deciding factor as to why someone will join a gym uh, like Celine Rec Center. And obviously, everybody in the room knows we're doing our our utmost to convince people that uh, our facility is um, not only. Um, cheap <laughs> compared to the uh, uh, neighboring facilities, um, but also family friendly and, and boasts some, some great equipment and classes. So thank you for your continued work to improve the viability of our center. Thank you. If there's nothing further, it's been properly moved by Rhodes and seconded by Saibo Koenig to approve and to authorize. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it, the motion carries unanimously. Uh, we move on to new business item 14-150. This is community events application, um, Saline Area Schools pep rally. This will be a motion to acknowledge receipt of the June 27th, 2014 memo from Saline Area Schools Superintendent Graydon and to approve or not to approve the application for a community event for a pep rally to be held on August 28th, 2014 from 6 to 8 p.m. located between Michigan Ave and Henry Street. Move to approve. Thank you, Mr. Gearbaugh. Is there a Second. second. Seconded by Mr. Roth. We do not have somebody from the schools here this evening, but can I have the clerk's office or city manager wish to speak to this at all? Um, well, maybe a team team effort for all those involved. If um, I know the chief had obviously spoken with with Scott, um, and I I've, I've spoken with him. Um, they want to do a kind of community spirit uh, gathering prior to the I believe it's the first home football game and they wanted to, to be downtown. We talked about other places in the community, and he's the uh, school board really likes um, bringing the, the, uh, the um, community together downtown. So that's what they'd like to do. And um, so I, if there's any additional, uh, as, you see, as you'll read um, Chief Rennick's uh, uh, email, is that um, there's no additional cost to, to police department. Um, and again, it's not gonna be that long of an activity. Um, I don't know if anybody else from staff has any other comments they wanted to. Okay. Right. Any questions or comments from council? Ms. Tahar, excuse just, me. Uh, yeah, just a question. Um, the, the motion, as it's worded, doesn't actually um, say South Ann Arbor Street between Michigan Avenue and Henry Street. The application is clear that it's South Ann Arbor Street between Michigan Avenue and Henry Street. So I don't know if that makes any difference or if we should add that to the motion. We could certainly add it to the motion. I think it's probably fine if it's in the, the, the supplemental material, but it's really, um, okay. I mean, That's I'll do true. whatever council wants to do. <laughs> could yeah, be a South Louis Street. Street. <laughs> South Ann Arbor Street. Yeah, Arbor Street. Street. Located between Michigan Ave and Henry Street on South Ann Arbor. Yep. Yeah. yeah, just that little addendum. Yeah, okay. That's fine. Okay, you're good with that, Mr. Gearbaugh? Mm -hmm. You're good with that, Mr. Roth? Yes, okay. The motion is modified in a very informal way, okay. 
Thank you for that, that, that uh, clarification, Mr. Hart. Are there any additional comments? I guess mine would be, and i actually been planning to speak to Superintendent Graydon on a separate issue, but one of the things I would encourage them to do since this is a new event and hopefully it's successful and something that's done for years to come would be maybe to reach out to Main Street and see if there's an ability to partner. Um, have you already done that? Okay, very good. Just seems like a great opportunity if you're going to get a number of students and parents and other stakeholders downtown. We want to want them to patronize our businesses. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Glad that collaboration is happening. If there's nothing further, it's been properly moved by Gearboss, seconded by Roth. Again, please note the addendum at the end to include on South Ann Arbor Street. Um, to approve, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. We move on to new business item 14-151. This is community event application waiver for showmobile rental fees. This will be a motion to acknowledge receipt of the June 24th, 2014 letter from the Saline Community Fair President Kevin Ernst and the July 10th, 2014 memo from DPW Director Fordyce and to approve or not to approve the request to waive the showmobile rental fees above and beyond delivery and return charge. Move to approve. Thank you, Mr. Gearbaugh. Is there a second? Support. Supported by Council Member Rhodes. Um, Mr. Fordyce, do you care to comment at all? Do we have a guest from the Saline Fair? Thank you for being here. Both of you gentlemen are welcome to come up. Yep. I just want to say uh, uh, thank you for, for letting us use a showmobile for many years, as far as I can remember. Um, the fair has been strapped over the last uh, four or five years, and even leading up to that with the funds, and this is just another way we're trying to kind of assure that we can continue on with the, with the fair, and, and everybody on the board is doing all we can, so I appreciate anything that you guys can do. And, I know that we work with uh, with the communities downtown at Kiwanis and Rotary and support them as well. So I appreciate everything you can do. Very good. Thank you. Mr. Foyce, do you have anything you'd like to add, sir? Um, really, uh, nothing much more than in my memo there. Uh, uh, council granted a similar waiver um, two years ago. Last year they paid the, uh, the full rate. The showmobile is on site for rough, at least a week, a week to 10 days, and we only charge um, for the dates they actually use it. Um, so last year they play, paid uh, three days of rent, and um, that's what I anticipate would be the same this year, and that's that $1,200 is what uh, you're looking at waiving. Okay. Very good. Are there any questions for either the applicant or Mr. Fordyce? No? Any comments? Mr. Rhodes? Um, I support this, uh, this motion to waive because it is, in fact, the Saline Community Fair, even though it happens to be held outside the city limits because there's not enough room in the city to do it. But it used to be held down on Henny Field a number of years ago. And um, it, it's one of the remaining vestiges of our agricultural heritage. And I think it's important that we, that we support that. Very good. Any additional comments? I would agree it's a very important event um, and we'd like to see you you prosper and thrive in, in years to come. So if we can support you in, in small but profound ways, I, I think that's a that's a good thing. Okay. Thank you for your work on this too, Mr. Fortis. If there's nothing further, um, it's been properly moved by Gearboss, seconded by Rhodes to approve. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. Thank you for your time this evening. We move on to new business item 14-153. This is Harris Street Soil Boring uh, Bid Proposal. This will be a motion to acknowledge receipt of the July 14th memo from City Superintendent Engineer Rubel and to approve or not to approve the professional services agreement between the City and Inspection Services Incorporated in the estimated not to exceed amount of $4,760 and to authorize or not authorize the Mayor to sign the agreement. Move to approve and authorize. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Tahar. Is there a second? Support. Second. Support by Councilwoman Saibo Koenig. Mr. Rubel, would you care to go over your memo at all, sir? Uh, just briefly, um, I've performed some of the early preliminary engineering to, uh, to scope out uh, the work needs. And uh, one, <clears throat> one of the first consultant items we need is a geotech uh, geotechnological uh, investigation of the pavement structure underneath the pavement so we can determine what type of reconstruction it needs. And then that'll, the results of this report will wrap into the design requirements coming later this year. Very good. Mr. Gearbaugh. Uh, my question is, I know this is a company that did, in your memo states, Northview and Wildwood, but we've had problems with what was done in Northview, Northview and Wildwood with the street sinking right. and failures. 
Well, it wasn't as, as a result of the testing. It was a result of the material product that was used on okay. Ghost Bud. Uh, I just want to make sure because I know there was concerns at that time so that we don't have a repeat and make sure that the inspection services yeah. are up to par. So, okay. Yeah. Good question. Uh, any other questions or comments? Why don't you stay put, Mr. Rubel, because you're on deck for the next motion as well. Okay. Um, well, if there's nothing further, um, it's been properly moved by Mayor Pro Tem Tahar, seconded by Councilwoman Saibo Koenig to approve and authorize. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. Uh, moving on to new business item 14-154. This is contract payment request number seven at wastewater treatment rehab project uh, accounting status. This will be a motion to acknowledge receipt of the July 14th, 2014 memo from City Superintendent Engineer Rubel and to approve or not to approve pay request number seven in the amount of $55,077, excuse me, as submitted by the contractor, Franklin Howardle Company. I probably butchered that name. My apologies. Okay. Is there a motion to approve or not to approve? Move to not approve. It's been moved by Mr. Gearbot to not approve. Is there a second? A second for discussion. Okay. It's been seconded by Mr. Rhodes for discussion. Mr. Rubel, do you care to go over your memo? Uh, well, just a cover letter, basically, of what the engineers have reviewed with the contractor and what uh, payment he's eligible for at this time based on the work that's been accomplished. Okay. Very good. Any questions for staff? Yeah, it's pretty clear on the memo from um, Tetra Tech that they're not getting the information they're asking for. So what, what I've learned is when you don't get the information you're asking for, you don't pay. So right. I'd like a little clarification as how concerned are they as not to getting the information. Right. That the information for. they're asking for is not related to the items that are being paid, though. Those items are cleared. The 55,000 are items that have been completed and cleared inspection. They've not been paid for the stuff that are the information is pending, basically change order items. So, so the way their memo states, please note that while we have repeatedly asked for waivers of lien, none have been provided. And then it says we have asked the contractor for a brief schedule indicating their data completion. At this time, we have still not received any additional information regarding change order number two. It sounded to me like there's a lot of stuff that they're not providing and somehow we need to ask them why and, right and by not paying it right, would correct. be one of the ways to get that information right but that's not it's not related that uh, information is not related to the items that are authorized to be paid those are items that are being held back and the, whose money is being held back uh, we have a contract agreement that we have we have contract, a contractual agreement that we can't really override legally I don't think because we are obliged or responsible to pay for what's been completed but we don't have to pay for what's not completed and so we are the money for what's not completed is still in the balance mr campbell did you want to comment sir sure thank you sir i just wanted to add i mean uh, as gary said um uh, staff is w working with um tetra tech has been tr trying uh, working diligently to get that information for the the change order two that you, that you hell have not seen yet uh, because they haven't produced that so our position uh, as is tetra texas we're not exactly what you're saying is we will not be paying that until they show us satisfactory documentation um, um, and if i remember right it has to do specifically with um, removal of uh, uh, cleaning out numbers of gallons of one of the, the holding tanks or i can't, can't remember which um, as part of the project, um, but in any case, um, and that's our that will continue to be our dis our, our position is that uh, we will not pay them if they don't show us um, proper documentation to that, that reflects the amount that they're trying to charge. Now, and, and, and uh, Gary is absolutely right in that uh, the items on this pay request have been substantiated um, through um, Tetra Tech, and they have they have provided. Uh, all the necessary documentation for these items um, and that uh, because they have done that there's not a um, and we do also have part of the uh, Gary um, the um, retainer the retainer do you, do you recall off the top uh, of your head? I believe it's around sixty six thousand dollars so even on the work that's completed we have withheld money right even though they completed it you do contractually withhold the retainer Till the end, and and just for a buffer. Okay. The retainer is within the 149,000. Okay. So whatever's on here 
is agreed upon that we're fine with it, except this concern I have about the waivers and liens. But is that none of that's associated with this, what we're paying tonight for the work that's already well, he completed? Well, he did submit that later. Oh, after, so we do have that now? After the pack was put together, he submitted a letter that, co that confirmed that there were waivers. Okay, well, that helps. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Rhodes, did you have a question? Yeah, I'm sorry, I was, Mr. Rhodes. Did no, you have no, that's okay. fine. I'm sorry. I was just going to say my experience in construction is that lien waivers are not asked for uh, until work has been completed and prior to payment. And so if they've been asking for lien waivers and haven't received them, I have to assume that's for work that's been done, not work yet to be done. So, and certainly a way to get somebody's attention is to not pay the bill. While we have a contract with them that's, I'm assuming, specifies payment, progress payment points, the other side of that contract is there, you have to do the work and they have to provide the documentation that's required. So, based on what I just heard, I'm okay with denying this, this payment for the, yeah. until next council meeting and let them get the lien waivers in. I thought he just said that we received the lien waiver information. Well, there's a there's a sworn statement attached here, too, uh, from, um, who is it? But there is a, a sworn statement here concerning the waiver. I'd like to see a statement from Tetra Tech that they've received the, the well, they, all of the documentation that they have asked for and is appropriate. Well, I held this for a couple of weeks until I got an email from Tim Hart that they were satisfied that they were given the sworn statement and that it was okay to process. That's why it's on the agenda. Yeah, again, if I, if I may, Please. the only thing that, that has not been substantiated uh, thus far is this the particular item um, in uh, this change order number two that's been right, sitting. But that's not being asked for. So. Correct. That's correct. Yeah. So I'm I'm we, concerned about what is being asked for, and I'm going to make sure that those lien waivers, right. those documents, have been provided. We can. It's, I mean, we so. can certainly hold off until. I believe they have been received, but but I mean, it's up to council if that's. I, I obviously I, I will, uh, you know, uh, ask for or. Uh, entertain the question um, to either approve or not to approve this, but based on what I'm hearing from Mr. Gearbaugh as well as Councilmember Rhodes and my own sort of reservations and feelings, I guess what I would be partial to is postponing this till our next meeting, hoping that the right. that additional information could be submitted. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Roth, did you have well, I'm, With all this stuff going back and forth, you've totally confused me. Okay. So I need a lot more clarification. Right. Let's, since there is a motion on the floor, um, let's vote on this. And then if there isn't a majority um, who, uh, if the majority um, votes against the motion, then I'll entertain a motion to postpone um, this issue till our next meeting on August 11th. So it's been moved by Gearboss, seconded by Rhodes, not to approve. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. There no nays? Yeah. I I would rather have just had that motion with her on rather than vote negatively to pull it back. I was confused by what you said. I well, guess. so my apologies. So let me let me Don't take confused. let me let me take a step back. <laughs> um, so if you recall, uh, I think the issue came up um, two meetings ago when we were um, approving the employee contracts, um, and many council members had concerns, and those motions were tabled to the subsequent meeting. Well, Mr. Roth and I talked because he had many concerns and questions about the, um, the, the parliamentary procedure that was used. And in my subsequent research, and of course I think I articulated this at the last meeting, the appropriate verge, verbiage is usually to postpone, not to table. But to make a long story short, what I also learned was it's really not acceptable to remove a motion once it's been properly moved and seconded. It is perfectly fine after subsequent discussion for the mover and the seconder to vote against their motion if new information has come to light. But generally, the way it's interpreted in parliamentary procedure and Robert's rules is once that motion is made and once it's seconded, it no longer belongs to the mover and the seconder. No. It's the group's motion, if that makes sense. So we need to uh, vote against approving the motion to want, not approve if, in if, order to bring it back. If your desire is to postpone it, okay? okay. So just okay. to be clear, if the desire of council is to postpone this motion, then what we need to do is vote against this motion and then offer, somebody needs to offer a subsequent motion to postpone. And again, when you properly postpone, you, you attach a date to that. So it would be to our next meeting on August the 11th. Does that make sense? Got it. 
So we just took a vote, though, to not pay it. Yeah, I believe we did. So um, again, tell me everyone who said not to pay it voted yes. So that's three voted yes, OK, not to pay. And I'm assuming, let me ask again. And then the nays on that motion are OK. So that motion fails because it didn't have a four, didn't have four people in favor. Regardless of absences, you always have to have four people in favor. So that motion okay. dies. Thank you for clarifying, Mr. Gearbach. <laughs> At this time, I would seek a motion to um, postpone this motion, 14-154, to our subsequent meeting on August 11th. Is there a motion? I will do that. Thank you, Mr. Roth. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by is that Mayor Pro Tem Tahar? Yes, sir. I apologize for the confusion, folks. Um, is there any discussion? Mr. Rubel, you're clear on what, what council wants? What information by the 11th? Sort of. OK. Are you clear? Can you talk to them about what we want? Uh, yeah, I mean, again, and I, but yes, we okay. will make sure we have everything. Okay, thank you. All right, so it's been properly moved by uh, Roth, seconded by Tahar to um, postpone this motion until uh, our next meeting on August 11th. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. Um, we move on to our last new business item of the evening, 14 155. This is telephone system update. This will be a motion to acknowledge receipt of the July 15th, 2014 memo from Technology Support Coordinator uh, Schock and to approve or not to approve the bid from CTS Communications in the amount of $12,533.19, which includes phone equipment, training, and installation for the city's telephone system upgrade. Is there a motion? Move to approve. Thank you, Ms. Seibel Koenig. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mayor Pro Tem Tar. Mr. Schock, the floor is yours. Okay, good evening. Uh, in front of you, I kind of outlined the, the project in a nutshell. Um, our current phone system has been in place since roughly uh, March 2008, so about six years. Uh, and over that time, it's been pretty good. Uh, unfortunately, we've kind of hit a roadblock where we're at right now. Um, kind of key components are, are failing. And because of its age, there's really no way to repair them. It's just a matter of replacing them. So along with replacing them, as I've listed kind of in the memo, there's some really great kind of modern features that will help um, kind of all around make things quicker, better, faster for not only residents, but also um, city staff. So. Very good, Mr. Schunk. Are there any questions? Uh, Mr. Rhodes and then Mr. Gearbaugh. Um, how do we ever get to the point where we have only one phone number for city? staff and just extensions instead of these various numbers? Uh, it depends on the position. Some staff members do have, they call them DIDs, so they have direct dial-in lines. Uh, mm -hmm. So, for instance, Mr. Campbell has a direct line that goes to him specifically. Um, I don't I don't. there's a rhyme or reason. I think it's more historic why some people have them, some people don't. Um, there is a monthly fee associated with them. It's pretty minimal, but, you know, like I said, it, it pretty much depends on the position for who warrants them or not. You know, and, and, and I... I wasn't really addressing those direct dial-in lines. I was, I was thinking of the fact that we have to dial one number for City Hall here and another number for DPW and another number for whatever. I mean, we're, we're a city. We ought to have a number and then just extensions for the various departments and people within them. So I don't know if it's possible to get to that point or if that means throwing out the whole phone system and spend Actually, a quarter of a million dollars or whatever. Right, and it, that's kind of what we're going to do in a nutshell is throw out the entire system right now and rebuild it. So that is one thing that we're looking to do. So to streamline that whole operation to, to mimic that, where it is department-based, not necessarily. It, it's kind of one of the things we've gone back and forth on. Do people know if I pay my tax bill, talk to the treasurer, or as opposed to just hit pay my tax bill? So that's what we're going to look at, kind of mm -hmm. cleaning that whole thing up to make it faster. So. so just to be clear, what's being evaluated or analyzed would be, at least in theory, having one main number for City of Saline, whether you're Correct. trying to reach the DPW, wastewater treatment plant, or City Hall, and then to get the various individuals, then you would dial an extension. Right. Actually, we have that now, in a sense. If you dial in the, the 4907 number, if you put in extension 2600, you get DPW. You just don't know that because it's not publicly okay. really out there. So yeah, the new, the new system will make it a lot more discoverable, in a sense, okay. to make it easier. Mr. Gear, I'm sorry to cut you off. Uh, no, that's fine. I just was curious, um, does this help assist with any kind of ADA issues or like uh, the TDD and that type of thing or not? Uh, my understanding is the only requirement is with, with dispatch to have that equipment. I don't believe it, it, this, this system doesn't support that. I, I don't okay. know. If you know if that's something we need to look at, I didn't know if we ever had that kind of situation for our hearing impaired, hearing impaired citizens or whatever. Okay. Any other questions or comments, Ms. Tahar? Yes, thank you. Um, I just wondered if uh, how many systems you looked at. 
uh, or if there's only pretty much one sure. player? Or yeah, there, there's a ton of systems. This is kind of a booming market right now. There's a lot of them. Um, the way I kind of evaluate it is we've uh, put a significant investment into Toshiba equipment already. So in a sense, I don't want to throw a number out, but it, it would be tens of thousands of dollars to start over with a different manufacturer. Unfortunately, a lot of them are not compatible with each other. They do it on purpose. You have to buy their equipment and their stuff going forward. So um, that's kind of where we're at. It, it's something to value down the road. But right now, you know, like I said, it would be significantly more investment to, to go that route. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Mr. Roth, Is please. there a resale of our present equipment then? Uh, maybe to an antique market. No. Um, <laughs> it, it's probably not. We can try, but I, I doubt there would be much value in it due to its age. And we are going to use parts of it, so it'd be kind of a niche market that somebody would need only certain components that we're replacing. We're not kind of throwing out the whole system in a sense. So. Your electronic surplus spoilage days. Yeah. <laughs> so. If there's nothing else, Mr. Shank, thank you. Thank Appreciate you. your time this evening. Is there any subsequent discussion? No? It's been properly moved by Cybo Koenig, seconded by Tahar to approve. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. We move on to the discussion portion of our agenda. Up first are commission, committee, and task force reports from council. Mr. Rhodes and then Mr. Gearbaugh. Um, reporting on the Environmental Commission. Uh, we met last week and um, one of the things that we noticed was that the uh, First Presbyterian Church has installed solar panels on a goodly portion of their roof. And so we've invited one of their members to come to our next meeting and talk more to, to explain the rationale behind doing that. And we also uh, will send them a certificate of appreciation or something to recognize their efforts. And also we voted to send a certificate of appreciation to the Celtic Festival folks for the recycling containers that they provided down at the park this year. Uh, big improvement over previous years. Chase Stanton uh, came and met with us, a uh, gentleman who does Channel 18, CATV. Um, we have three public service announcement videos that have been completed and we're, uh, we went over new potential ones. And um, he will be working with um, Leslie Needhammer, who is the, the point person from the Environmental Commission for those public service announcements. We have one more Saturday that we set up at Farmer's Market, and that's on August the 16th. And then on September 20th is the County Cleanup Day at DPW for hazardous waste. And you see under the Lenda Light program, uh, Bruce has, uh, Westlake has gone to several businesses with a representative from Batteries and Bulbs to talk with them about changing their lights over to LEDs and the advantages of it. And the reason it's called Linda Light is that uh, we lend them LED lights to install and see how it works in their particular environment. Um, Celine Post did a uh, training session at the uh, library for to teach people how to uh, post blogs and announcements and Leslie again attended that and will be again our point person on blogging on the Celine post and then uh, we had a fair amount of discussion about the new recycling program and the the concerns about the 96 gallon recycle carts that uh, were voiced at our, at our last meeting and so the uh, the commission would like to suggest that uh, the city meet with the homeowners associations of those um, condo units primarily that did not have the space to store, or at least said they didn't have the space to store those units um, and who had rules against place, keeping them outside their units to meet with them to see if it's possible to one, either modify their rules to exempt these particular recycling carts for outside storage or to establish some uh, some centralized uh, areas for the recycling within those within those associations, and we understand that that will probably make it a little more difficult for those residents to recycle. And we we are sorry that that has occurred, but it would be better than them not having an opportunity to recycle at all. And that's the uh, primary business that was carried on. Oh, one last item. Steve and Julia Dibel had triplet boys 
And so we have uh, made them honorary members of the Advisory Council for Environmental Commission. And in 18 or 19 years, we look forward to having them sit with us. It won't be me, though. It'll be somebody else there. <laughs> I appreciate uh, your, your comments, Mr. Rhodes, and uh, I especially appreciate the, the Commission's work um, regarding our current waste management contract uh, related to recycling. And uh, I was uh, approached again on, uh, on Sunday at church by some members who live in uh, condos who simply cannot accommodate the, the larger bins. Um, but uh, if you happen to have subsequent conversations with citizens or if anybody um, at the dais does, as, as we talked about at our last meeting, we're going to continue to investigate having a central location to in town um, where people could conceivably drop off recycling as well. But your work to, to find uh, other options and alternatives is, is, um, is greatly appreciated. Mr. Gearball. Um, yeah, I just wanted to bring council up to date. We held our meeting with uh, staff, our city attorney, and members of the HDC to discuss the um, potential clarification that will happen with the current HDC ordinance and so forth. Tomorrow night, the um, HDC will be meeting to try and um, come together about the information. It could be as simple as just removing one sentence, but it's also clarifying exactly what's happening um, in terms of what uh, reviews and things would occur. We're hoping just to make it where anything that's an exterior change or those type of things would be the concern that would be reviewed and nothing else major where paint colors or those things would not be the focus. It's just the idea of being consistent. And we also had a recent issue with another house this weekend where um, some major renovation work happened to it that um, was not reviewed either. So we're hoping to get this going quickly. It'll come back to council for review and public hearing and, and discussion. So hopefully in the next month or so, this will help us resolve it and clarify a lot of information that, and support the HDC. HDC stands for? Oh, Historic District Commission, sorry. And Mr. Gerbal, I'm not planning to attend the meeting tomorrow, but um, you know, my office, in conjunction with the city manager, facilitated the uh, the meeting that Mr. Gerba, um discussed. And I actually thought the meeting went very well. Um, I think we have consensus on how best to move forward, and hopefully, there's a robust discussion on, um, or excuse me, within the uh, the historic district uh, commission tomorrow evening. Um, and then once that information is is conveyed to our legal counsel, he can draft. The appropriate language and then we're going to try and, and move this along sooner as opposed to later we're going to try and get it to council just as soon as we can and actually i was interested tonight when we were discussing the mdot um, review for 12 us 12 and such that shippo's involvement in that so this may be a good actually time to do this and tie it in with that so we can have our activities move forward on the um, michigan state uh, main michigan avenue when we go to do it so great okay. Commission Committee reports. Ms. Seibel Koenig. Just a couple notes from the Parks Commission. Um, Friday is the uh, movie in the park, and it is Despicable Me 2. Is it also the camping night? It is. Family. It is family camping night. So always a big fun night in the park. And um, the Green Thumb nomination period is coming to a close at the end of July, so people should submit their nominations for consideration. Very good. Is there anything else, Carla? I miss. Okay. Any other commission, committee, or task force reports? I just want to acknowledge on behalf of the executive committee of the Celine Celtic Festival, I know that that group, um, and all the co-chairs for that matter, wanted to thank those of you on, on council who were able to attend um, either pub night on Friday or the opening ceremony and then um, all the other attractions on Saturday afternoon. Uh, I got a lot of positive feedback from people um, who attended the festival, people from the Saline community, and people who traveled as far as Wisconsin and Illinois. So we had great weather. It was a, it was a great festival. Uh, we don't have um, final numbers in yet, but um, as soon as those are available, they will uh, be forthcoming to City Council. Are there any other uh, Commissioner Committee reports? How about reports and other announcements? I'll just very briefly talk about this um, Saline Area Social Service um, issue that, that Mr. Burgoyne um, brought up earlier. Um, so many um, should have seen um, in both the Saline Reporter and Saline Post, and I thank both of those entities for running it. Um, I submitted a letter to the editor encouraging citizens to support um, Saline Area Social Services and, and strongly consider making a financial investment into that organization. They do so much for those who, who need a helping hand in the community. Um, and then also today we had a um, meeting. Um, it included most of the uh, members of the Saline Area uh, Social Service Board as well as a, another entity. I don't want to get into too much depth at this point because it wasn't uh, um, 
Well, there was no tangible outcome yet, um, but it was with another individual or another entity, excuse me, in the community who um, I think will be in a position to um, help Saline Area Social Service. Um, went very well. There's some follow up and subsequent discussions that will need to take place, but I will definitely keep you abreast to that. Um, and then also, as I mentioned at the last meeting, um, we're going to continue to work with um, Washtenaw County United Way because they have reserve funds um, and hope to support some initiatives and programs in the Saline community that, um, that help those in need. Um, and I think that meeting is tentatively scheduled to take place next Friday um, with Washtenaw County Economic Development, um, United Way um, staff, and um, some other community stakeholders. And I'll actually be sure to let uh, the rest of council know. And if you're interested in attending that, um, you are more than welcome to do so. Um, any other reports and announcements? Mr. Rhodes. I, I just remembered the um, crowdfunding uh, work group that you asked to be assembled uh, was and, and met. And um, Chris Miller from Adrian attended. He's, um, he and Representative Jenkins are the, are the ones kind of pushing, that pushed the whole thing. And, uh, we now have uh, crowdfunding regulations which permit individual businesses relatively inexpensively to apply for funding from uh, independent individuals as long as they reside within the state of Michigan. And there is another uh, called Fundrise, uh, which is for the recruitment or the uh, requesting, again, investments. In, but this would be for vacant land and the development of it. And then the third leg of the stool is um, Travelicity. I'm not sure the pronunciation of that, but it's uh, supported by MEDC, and it's for the uh, improvements, creation and improvements of public spaces, gathering places within our, our communities. And I think that that, um, that last one might be of some assistance with us as we move forward with Merchant Park or Merchant Plaza. Um, there's another meeting of that crowdfunding group coming up in a couple of weeks. I don't know the date of it. But I believe it's the 31st. I'm sorry? The 31st. 31st. Oh, that's 80. true. Ms. Zybel Koenig was there. Yes, I was. Yes. Excellent. Thank you for that. And I actually spoke to uh, um, Executive Director Art Trapp uh, on Friday, and he said that it was a good meeting, had a real mm -hmm. robust discussion, and learned a lot. So please keep us uh, in the loop, Mr. Rhodes. Are there any other reports or announcements? I just have one, um, a, a, a very nice thing. Um, yesterday I had the honor of attending um, Carl Weller, who's the founder of, of um, Weller's um, in Saline, his 90th birthday party. It was a surprise for him um, down at Weller's, and he was, he was pleasantly surprised, to say the least. Um, uh, Council Member Roth's uh, wife, Joan, was there. I think Mr. Roth had a prior commitment, but I think you were there in spirit. Is that correct, Mr. Roth? Definitely. Yeah, and so he um, he has done so much for this community over the years, and uh, founding that business when he did um, brought a lot of a, uh, attention and energy to, to our community. In fact, you should see pictures of, of that property when he acquired it. Um, he really had a vision, and uh, that vision is still alive and well today. So if you see Carl out and about, be, uh, be sure to wish him um, a happy birthday and many more years of, of, of health and happiness. If there are no other uh, reports and announcements, uh, we'll move on to a town hall facilitator. I believe this is uh, you, Clerk Royal. Yes. Um, I know it seems like it's a little bit out, but um, at the last SWAT meeting, last year's SWAT meeting, we had discussed, or the council had discussed having a town hall facilitator come in for those meetings. So I want to, um, Lou Bender does a lot of the, I know he does police and he does the clerk's institute and he's very good at bringing people together and keeping people on track. But his um, schedule is very busy. So if we want to look at him coming in and helping, I need to find out so that we can get him Scheduled and just just to be clear clerk, clerk, clerk Royal um, for those in the audience and those at the dais um, This would be different than our strategic planning retreats that we have as a council This would be a town hall to engage our citizens Correct. on one topic or multiple topics, right? Okay, mr. Uh, Campbell. Please. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. I, actually this does, was a discussion at the, at the um, previous uh, strategic planning sessions and it was the the, the thought was was to for this coming for it would be so fiscal year 16 that this would actually take place of 
those I mean, that was the discussion. Okay. So, I mean, we can certainly do whatever uh, council would like us to do with that. That's why we brought this about um, in that uh, um, it was staff's understanding that, that council wanted to do a, a town hall state meet, meeting uh, for their strategic planning. What uh, What is council's opinions or, uh, or thoughts? Mr. Rhodes? Uh, what's the cost to bring this gentleman in? Um, approximately 2,000 a day. And are we multiple days, are we thinking, or? No. No? <laughs> uh, again, from, uh, in my mind, it would be a, uh, a one day, right? One day, probably you know two or three hour event. Similar, I believe similar. I wasn't here, but similar to um, what I, my understanding of some of the, the the town hall meeting that was conducted for um, um, the uh, uh, oh I'm sorry, blue the blueprint and mm -hmm. and those types. So that my understanding was there was like 350 people. Mm -hmm. which, which is very, very successful. So was. that was when you all were discussing it, that was what I was envisioning in my head. Okay, I, I didn't know if he would have some involvement before and or after pulling information together. And I said more, more days, more hours. Right, we, yeah, staff, we could certainly clarify that. Um, but yes, exactly right. He would work with, with staff to get up to speed. Um, and uh, get direction of exactly what it is that the council want him to do. And, and I would certainly um, echo uh, um, Clerk Royal's comments. Uh, uh, Lou Bender uh, does a great job. He's very well respected. I've been to a few of his uh, seminars and such over the years and, and uh, does a very good job of, as, as uh, Terry said, bringing folks together. So, Real quick, um, if council decides to, to pursue this uh, and investigate, um, having Luke uh, facilitate a town hall meeting, um, since um, it's based on the assumption that it will be advertised and promoted to the public, the other thing that I would be very interested in, not that there'd be anything wrong, in fact, it'd be great to have 350 people show up, but you need to have tight control and have a lot of structure and, and a real firm agenda in order for there to be cohesion and for something tangible to come out of that. So that would just be my initial thought. Mr. Roth? I got a couple questions. Please. I'm not sure what the topic or the agenda is going to be and what the expected outcome is going to be for that type of expenditure. Sure, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, again, as I mentioned, as I understood the direction of the discussion at the uh, most recent strategic planning sessions last fall, uh, early winter, um, was that in place of this, in place of the typical strategic planning uh, work sessions, that you all would, would utilize this to, to bounce off ideas and thoughts and see where is, is, um, uh, is this where um, the community wants to see the city head. Um, so there would be that component of here's the current strategic plan and if there's any, obviously, uh, my thought process there would be an analysis of this is what we're working on. Um, here's some results thus far. Um, and then if, if council members, I mean, that would be up to you all if, if you wanted to uh, propose some additional topics in addition to the current, to see if there, if you all wanted to see any changes in the, in the current strategic plan going forward uh, or continue on as is, similar, similar to what we do now, um, minus obviously the, the team building components that you all do. Um, but so that, that would be, that's, that's what I have envisioned in my head. Thank, thank you. Now, I was wondering if we could include perhaps looking into the future for streetscape for Michigan Ave and US 12 improvement that could be added as a part of it because that's a vision. We need public input for to envision that project. Sure, sure. Absolutely. Could that all fit together in that sure. package? I don't, see, I don't see why not. In fact, if you recall, Mr. Roth, um, currently in our strategic um, plan, that has been reviewed and, of course, adopted for the past, uh, well, in the last many years. There's a there's a section that talks about infrastructure, mm -hmm. um, so I think that's perfectly germane and appropriate. Then, addressing the cost factor, how much difference is this particular person versus what we've had in the past? What's the increase? Um, let's see, Mr. Petrock is um, he, he again? He does a lot of it service back to the community and he considers Celine his community. Um, 
even though he doesn't live in the corporate limits, but um, he was around 1,800 or so. But you may recall in those discussions, you know, he, he'd be happy uh, to do that, but he, he's not familiar with you um, addressing those lar that large of a potential or potential large crowd. So he'd be, again, he'd be happy to continue on the way we've been doing using him, but for this, he'd be happy to oblige somebody else as well. Thank you. Any other thoughts? Mr. Gearbaugh? No, that helped on a clarification about dealing with a larger crowd. I was just more wondering what local resources or individuals that have done this type of thing just so that um, we're kind of keeping in state, but um, I can understand if this individual has been a lot more prepped with bigger groups and such, that can be an issue. If I may, absolutely, but what I will say is um, a lot of communities in and around Michigan utilize Lou. He actually lives, while he may, he's fresh remoretus, he actually lives just south of Cadillac. Okay, that um, helps. Thank yeah. you. Yep. <laughs> so is council, council, excuse me, interested in pursuing this a little bit more, having Luke come in to facilitate a town hall and entertain a much larger audience than we have in the past? Yeah, kind of a little more scope of what he would do exactly, because okay. sure. town hall is a little bit different than courses related to management and supervision. Sure. So, Can you engage him, Clerk Royal, and maybe come back on the 11th with a little bit more substance? Yes. Okay, yeah. very good. Does he have a website or something up with some information that we could look at individually in the um, meantime? He does, but it was having some problems. That's why I didn't send it out to you. So I will check and okay. see if it, it's up and running. And if it is, I will send it off to you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And hopefully it has a video of him running one of these. Anything else on this topic? Thank you for bringing this forward, Clerk Royal. I will also check with him and see if he's done any other communities so that I can check with the communities and see how it might be discussed. That's good. Thank you. Very good. Okay. So this will be coming back as a discussion item on the 11th. Okay, last but certainly not least uh, on the discussion portion of the agenda this evening is the uh, police department change to eight-hour shifts. Chief Rennick, do you want to come forward and discuss this a little bit, and then we'll entertain any questions that, uh, that council members have. Good evening. Well, with the um, uh, retirement of uh, Theo Helms coming much quicker than we had anticipated, he had originally told us that uh, he was going to retire sometime in January of 15. But he's finding it much more difficult to build a home in Florida and work. So if any of you have built a home, I guess you'd probably understand that. And so he uh, put in his letter of, of retirement uh, for uh, August 23rd. And as a result of that, uh, it's just putting such a strain on the police department as far as 12-hour shifts. I had a meeting uh, about a week ago, uh, even before the letter came in, or actually two weeks ago, even before the letter came in from the president of the union, uh, voicing some concerns about uh, officer safety, um, trying to find people to, to work, um, it, and it's becoming increasingly more difficult with the manpower that we have to fill the shifts efficiently. Um, uh, and it's, 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 it's easier to fill an eight-hour shift than it is to fill a 12-hour shift. And until the police department would get back to what I would say would be full strength, uh, both dispatch and uh, officer ranks, uh, I feel it best to go back to eight-hour shifts, which would have been what we were similarly on about a year and a half ago when we started the 12-hour shifts. If you recall, the 12-hour shifts were put in place um, as a trial. Uh, they, they seemed to work fairly well, but once again, that was based on full manpower, uh, which we no longer have. Uh, we have hired a couple of part-time people. Um, and nothing against part-time people, I don't want you to take this incorrectly, but they're not as reliable as full-time people. They have other lives, and so when we need somebody to work, they are not always available, and that makes it very, very difficult, and we end up having people work 18 hours, which is dangerous to themselves. And so in an effort to correct this, uh, I'm proposing that we uh, go back to uh, eight-hour shifts until uh, this equalizes itself, which may take uh, a significant amount of time because uh, even hiring new people with the training that we um, that we have with our field training officer and our communication training officer program that alone can take uh, 12 to 15 weeks plus the time to advertise plus the time to uh, do backgrounds and so I'm uh, I'm not suggesting this is going to be a short thing but it certainly could be uh, a year year and a half before we'd actually get back to 12s. Any questions for the chief? Mr. Roth? I kind of wondering for is, 
I understand the predicament you're in. I kind of wonder why you couldn't foresee something like this happening, that it could be possibility that you'd need more staff or what it would be, knowing that a retirement was going to be coming up so you'd be better prepared for such. And I thought also, also as far as looking at our, when we, it was agreed upon hiring more or for keeping our dispatch for 24 hours instead of just 12 hours. I don't think we've replaced dispatch people, so there seems to be a delay in hiring procedures, even though you know that it takes more time for back out things. I'm just thinking that there's been kind of a, a delay money wise. I don't know what caused it, but we should have been more proactive going ahead with this. I look at far as making a change so quick on these people that they may have had planned their lives around the 12 hour shift. Some of your current staff, it may cause some hardship there that have to alter plans. And I didn't know whether you took that in consideration or you had how you worked that out equitably that it's a problem that administratively was kind of neglected. You can't blame it on to your employees. So I mean, that's that's where I'm coming from. Okay. It, it just yeah. isn't. It, it to me, it it looks like it could. Some of this could have been avoided and planned for, in consideration for your employees instead of jumping in and saying within two weeks we're going to do this, or they were planning their lives around a 12-hour schedule and how they could have things. They may have booked vacations. They may have had other commitments that they're involved with. Now you're throwing. A monkey wrench into it. So just thinking, where is this thought process coming from? Is it administrative cause? How we can head this off and be be better prepared? Well, I, th I think the department was prepared. Um, we had anticipated, like I said, that uh, Thea was not going to retire until January, which would have given us five months to uh, take care of the hiring. We are in the process of hiring dispatchers uh, as a matter of fact, we're uh, working on a background on one dispatcher as, as, as I speak. Uh, we're looking at also hiring a second dispatcher. So hopefully sometime within the next, uh, you know, four or five months, dispatch will be taken care of. But as I said, the problem uh, is the training time that, that occurs here. And there's not really an anticipation for that. As far as the part-time people, we had, we had planned on hiring two more part-time officers as well. But we are finding that the part-time people are not as reliable uh, as the full-time people. And as far as um, if officers had made previous plans, we will honor those. We will honor the plans. Uh, I understand that this is going to be a hardship for them, but it's also a, a big hardship for the city. And the union president came to me uh, voicing his concerns on officer safety, and that got my attention very quickly. Uh, officer safety is number one for the police department, and if we can't keep our officers safe, then we need to look at doing something else. This is why we had to do this at a, at a moment's notice. Um, if uh, if Theo had not put in for this, uh, it may come to going back to eights uh, at a later time, but it would have delayed it by four or five months, which would have given the officers plenty of time to adjust for it. Uh, if we stay with 12s, it's going to cost significant dollars for the city because, uh, as uh, as you recall in the memo that the, the city manager gave you, uh, we're utilizing officers and sergeants on the desk at time and a half, which doesn't make good fiscal sense. Well, I agree with that, but I, you pointed out a couple of times that it takes a long time and you're looking at as far as you can't have reliable part-time people, but once you'll know that, then let's go to full-time people. So you have reliable staff. So I mean, just I'm kind of questioning the planning ahead. And I think that even where we're at right now, we need to expedite what we're doing to get, a, to get your staff at the level that it is safe. And the safety definitely is an issue, but I think we, we as council trying to afford you the budget to work with, but it's not happening for us to provide that for our officers. I, I, I guess I would disagree that it is happening. It's just that it takes time for it to happen. And unfortunately, we had made a job offer for uh, one of the communication officers who halfway through the process decided that he no longer wanted to be employed here, which meant that process had to start all over again. Uh, 
you know, it'd be nice to be able to see into the future, but I, I could not have seen that happen. Are we unique in our predicament? No, we are not. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Gibbon? Just comments. I think that we've had a lot of significant changes in policy impacts that have not necessarily made it clean and clear for the chief or for the city manager to operate quickly. And a lot of these changes have come at a last minute notice. I think that deals announcement rate, it happens in any organization when you have a number of individuals that are changing and management changes and staff are retiring and leaving. I'm going through the same organization charge. But our priority right now is to make sure the safety of the city occurs and our officers. Um, and I think there's been some other issues that have come up that have been impacting operations. So I think as we move forward, doing this is probably what we're going to have to do at this point. And I'm going to stay out of it because you're making the decision. You guys are hired to do this job. Let me kind of piggyback, if I, if I may, Mr. Gearboff, you're finished. Yes. I didn't want to interrupt you. Um, you know, his comments about making sure there are appropriate policies. I just want to make very clear to you, Chief, and to you, Todd, that if there are policies that need changing or support that you need from council to do your job effectively to help ensure an atmosphere in which the public is and feels safe, don't hesitate to come to us because we want to work with you to make those types of positive changes. Um, I do appreciate your, your comments to one of Mr. Ross' questions about being flexible to employees who have made plans or who have commitments that may somewhat conflict with the change from 12 to 8 hours because that, that initially was, was one of my um, concerns as well. Um, but it all comes back to something I think I've articulated to you on many occasions, articulated to this council and to the citizens, which is, Officer safety and our public safety is absolutely paramount. It's probably the most fundamental thing that we as a city provide to, to our residents. Um, and in saying that, it's critical to me that we have competent people in every position. So I do want you know, uh, to work quickly to, to fill these voids and these vacancies. Um, and at the same time, I, I want to work, and I know this is your goal as well, to make sure we have a dispatcher, a dispatcher and three competent officers on every shift because I think that's the best for officer safety and for our public safety as well. Um, just one quick question, the ch and I, I, I think I know the answer to this, but I just want you to confirm it. The change from 12 to 8, that will in no way adversely affect our ongoing uh, discussions with the schools about having a strong presence there to combat substance abuse, addiction, et cetera? No. It won't, it won't affect it at all. As a matter of fact, I have that meeting tomorrow morning. Okay, very good. We'll look forward to hearing more about that. Okay. Anything else? No? Chief, thank you very much for your thank time you. this evening. Appreciate it. Is there anything else to be brought up under discussion? Yes, Mr. Hart. Um, well, I know that we have Oh, yeah, maybe a, Chief, stay uh, up here for a second. Yeah, the supplemental was provided. firearm safety handout that wasn't mentioned yet. I appreciate you bringing this up. Maybe, Chief, you want to speak to what this initiative is. I know it's spearheaded by um, Sheriff Jerry Clayton. In fact, he uh, invited me to participate in the um, press conference on this, but unfortunately, you already had me booked to come and speak to Rotary. Actually, <laughs> I actually don't know who's to blame there. Um, but every, my understanding is every law enforcement agency in the county is participating. Yes, they it's are. Not, I want to be clear. It's not political. It's not... Uh, um, it's not about making any statements about gun control. It's emphasizing the importance of gun and firearm safety. Right. It's about gun safety, and you're, you're correct, and every law enforcement agency in the county uh, participates. As a matter of fact, I was supposed to be at the meeting as well, and, of course, you and I were at Rotary instead, so uh, Sergeant Basso actually attended that. And what it is is it's, a, it's the program just to uh, express how uh, concerned we are with gun safety and keeping guns out of innocent hands. Uh, we do provide free gun locks here at the police department. Many other police departments in the county provide those as well, and it's just a matter of trying to make our community safer. And I, I know that the sheriff is really trying to promote this and, and, and enhance this, this program and initiative, and maybe you can follow up with, with him or some of his subordinates, but one of the things I've offered to him in the past, if they ever want to do an event in conjunction with this in Saline, we would be happy to assist in, in coordinating that or even providing space. Absolutely. Thank okay. you. Is that sufficient, Mayor Pro Tem? Yes, okay. thank, Very you. Good. Thank, thank you. Thank you. If there's nothing else to be brought up under discussion this evening, uh, we'll move on to the public comment period of this agenda. Under the Open Meetings Act, any citizen may come forward at this time and make comment or question to City Council. This public comment period will be limited to three minutes per person. Anyone who would like to speak is requested but not required to state his or her name and address for the record. Are there any citizen comments? No citizen comments? Okay. Um, is there any other business to come before Saline City Council this evening? 
We have meetings, if you recall, our schedule is a little bit different in the month of August because we're off the first Monday, mainly to accommodate our folks in the clerk's department as they get ready for an election. So we'll be meeting on the 11th and the 18th. Um, and remember that we have a 6 p.m. work meeting on the 11th to discuss street funding and also bonding for MERS, a regular meeting at 7.30, and then another regular council meeting the following week um, at 7.30 p.m. Um, since he left um, earlier, I think at this time we should excuse the absence of Council Member Lee Burgoyne. So moved. Second. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Tahar, and seconded by Mr. Gearbaugh. All those in favor of excusing his absence signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. And now I would seek a motion to adjourn at 9.27 p.m. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Gearbaugh. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mayor Pro Tem Tahar. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. This meeting's adjourned.